Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you could use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology coach, and personalized learning coordinator for my district. And I'm her summer sidekick and producer and husband, Fuzz Martin. Cute. Hi. Hi. It's summertime. And the living's easy. We, uh... We have new microphones. I'm super sparkly. I'm sorry. I just want to tell somebody. <laughs> They're new. They're Yay. new. Yay. Sparkles. Yay. Schnaz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So episode 95, it's summertime and we decided to like pop in and say, hey. What's up? Hope you're getting uh, some, uh, you're, you're wearing your sunblock, first of all. Yes. I hope you're having a good relaxing summer for yeah. the most part. And I hope you're... Uh, in the mood for some cool stuff in this episode. <laughs> yeah. So sparkly. So fun. Mm-hmm. Starting to get a little rejuvenated, like starting to think like, oh, we're heading back to school. No pressure, everybody. We have plenty of time. We're not actually going back right away. But it's one of those where like mid-July, all those fun school supply sales start happening. I'm like, oh, I need new Expo markers in every color under the rainbow. You actually said to me the other day, I think I'm go- ready to go back to school. <laughs> I did say that out loud, didn't I? <laughs> and I said, Really? Tap the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did say that. I That's because I get like a little itchy about this time in the summer where I've had my break and I'm ready to start planning, but then I start planning and the planning of next year, because I do a lot of workshops and stuff and I prep things for the staff. So I kind of get on the train really, oh, I want to do all of this stuff. And then I sit down and I'm like, cool, for about an hour. And I'm like, all right, I'm going outside. Or, oh, I'm going to go do something else. Or I'm going to go to the store. And I come back to it the next morning like, yeah, I'm going to do this again. And it's like, yeah. Okay. So or maybe not. So in my brain, it's like kind of like starting to fire up. But then really, I go. Yeah, you get a little stir crazy. But then afterwards, you get... Then I'm like, oh, I need, oh, there's like a hundred zucchini in the garden. I need to go shred that and make it into something. Yeah. Or just shove it in the refrigerator with the other 12,000 zucchini that we have because it's the only thing that seems to grow in our garden. But pretty soon you'll be back in the school year and everything will be back to game on all the time. <laughs> so Learning. Yep. So anyway, so summary time, we are, you know, we try to pop something in here in the middle of summer and check in with everybody. But one focus I want to work on with my students this year is giving back to the community more, which I do try to work on with students. Um, and we kind of do, we have like little little cohorts of like students or they're kind of like, they're what we call them our A-teams, but um, it's kind of like your homeroom. And I try to do community type activities with them or giving back to the community. But last year... That was really difficult because we couldn't go anywhere and do anything. And so I was kind of digging into some cool ideas to get the kids involved in what's going on in the rest of the world. Um, Also, their local community and making connections and stuff. So I found some really cool sites. Um, Some of them you may be familiar with because they've been around for a while and then others may not. So this is definitely kind of 612 type community based activities. Um, and three really cool sites that you can definitely get your kids involved in and your school involved in, which I think is fun and making connections is so important. So agreed. The first site is called do something.org. Do something, do something, do something. <laughs> org. And what's cool about this is it has really easy activities that you like students can do. Um, or they can like jump on and do more complicated things. It really depends on like how involved you want to be, which I like because some students may just want to do the little can challenge, which is pick up five aluminum cans outside. Like you've met the challenge, you take a picture of it, you post it on the site, which is cool. Or there's like sections on uh, self-care. So like mental health checklists and keeping your friends safe. And there's like tips for driving when it comes to like teens driving or high schoolers. Um, and then they even have things about, um, like donating recycled clothes and how you can help the planet through recycling. They also have, um, 
like different things like environmental issues and racial justice and mental health and these different pieces. So if you go into the website, you have like causes. So you can go everything from like education to the environment to harassment to like gender rights. And so you can pick a cause if there's like a different cause you want to speak about or if you want to talk about like specifically in class or address it. Then they have various benefits. So there's even like scholarships out there that kids can look for or volunteer credits. And what's cool is they can track your volunteer hours and then come up with certificate. They have certificates for volunteer hours. Like if you're proving that you're doing your volunteering. Um, And then if on the homepage, you just scroll down a bit, they have like those featured stories. I kind of talked about them a little bit. Um, And you kind of just scroll down and see the different campaigns. And your students can pick one out as a whole group or they can pick them out individually or small groups and just kind of figure out, like I picked the road to self-care. If you click on it, it gives you some background information and then it's a checklist. So come up with teen driver, um, like safe checklist, and then you're able to share it with others. And then by putting this all together, like you can win a scholarship by going oh, cool. through and, and stepping up and, you know, coming up with these things. So there's just a lot of cool opportunities for students to get involved in their community in very, I guess, like actionable activities that are very relevant to what's going on in the world today. Um, and just interesting things also would be great discussion topics in class um, for like, you know, like current events, like things that are going on in the world, like they bring right. up um, all types of different topics. So do something.org is a really great site to get kids kind of aware of causes and um, get them involved like, yeah, in community activate things. Activate them and to mm-hmm. uh, get them to, to move and do some stuff. Yeah. That can, sh- it actually says that you can earn volunteer hours if you need them mm-hmm. in your uh, area. Um, and it shows each activity, whether or not you can earn volunteer hours for it, which is pretty cool stuff too. Yeah. And they also have like different hashtags for them, like, um, banning menthol cigarettes, like should this happen physical health and then like different hashtags for kids to follow or students to follow as well, Mm -hmm. um, to make them and build awareness on these different issues. So yeah, do something.org. It's really kind of a cool site to get students exploring and aware um, and also kind of helping out one another and the community around them. Great stuff. So that is our first one. Go, yeah, we, we did something. Go do something. Go by, do something. By telling you about it, we did something. Tiddy. And now hopefully you'll go do something. And have your students go do something. Exactly. And then do all the things. And pretty soon everybody's doing stuff. And we all feel good. <laughs> Yay. Yay. So our second site. Has been around for a while, but okay. I feel like it's kind of a, been a movement Yes, that has grown over time. It is littlefreelibrary.org. Yes, I so, love Little Free Libraries. I know. So what's fun is like, I feel like back in the day, it was such a thing. Like, it was, oh my gosh, you had to build your free library with these dimensions, and then it became an official one and went on the map, and there was like a big process to go through. But now... I mean, it's still a process to go through to get your library, but they make it so easy online. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Little Free Library, you'll notice them in your town or surrounding area. And it is a little kind of like a, I would call it a hut. A hut. <laughs> it's like a little chalet birdhouse. Yeah, it looks kind of like a birdhouse. A large birdhouse filled with books. Yes. Um. <laughs> Or a dollhouse on a stick yep. filled with books. There you go. Um, it depends or a, or, or on... Or how about this? A <laughs> library on a stick. Oh, you know, like yeah. A, like you'd get it or at the like state fair. Or like a chicken coop on a stick <laughs> with books in it. A chicken coop. Oh, I see. Yeah. Like, yeah, I see. I see what you mean by like chicken coop. Chicken coop. Like a hen house. Like a hen house? I yeah. don't know. Anyway, so Little Free Library is just that. <laughs> it is a little free library. And what is so cool about the site, and the site has come so far since it, when it was created, mm-hmm. um, that now you can, on the Little Free Library site, they, they have the kits where you can buy the Little Free Library oh, kit. Cool. Yeah. 
and it's made of like composite or there's like different choices and different colors. So you don't have to build them from scratch anymore. You can absolutely build them from scratch, but they also have them pre-done or in like so you can build them yourself. We have one um, that's maybe a block from our house. We have four in our town. Yes. Um, I did some research on this today. I know where two of them are. Well, there was one outside our library. Okay. But because they are talking about expanding our library, they have moved it outside the coffee shop in town. Yes, I've seen that. And then there's one on the outskirts on the other side of town. Good. Um. Yes. So. Then there's a fourth one that's hidden underground. In another part of town. Oh, okay. Um. So, Little Free Library as we talk about this and haven't talked about it yet, but it's a little box on a stick that is filled with books. And there's kind of a keeper or the person who created it kind of fills it with books. And then anyway, in the community, you walk by, take a book, drop a few books off after you're done reading them. And it's just a great way to share books with people in your community. They have them all over. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to their site, they have like the shop, the build that gives you all of the information about like they have merch along with just building or buying the little bir the bird houses when they buy the book, <laughs> the book houses. Um, but then what's cool is the map. If you click on it, you have the little free library map and you can search your town or your state. And I checked the state of Wisconsin. It's like covered in red dots, yeah. which is so cool. Yeah. But when you zoom in, you definitely can see areas where they're lacking. So. Like if your class or school wanted to build a little free library, I know some schools have them like in their school parking lots or in your local park or if there's an area where maybe it's the library is far away and you you want to be able to have access to books and change them out. And it's a great kind of thing in the community yeah. just to kind of share with the neighbors and we in our neighborhood, they're like, hey, have you stopped by the library lately? And we're like, yeah, we do all the time. And you mm -hmm. know, when our youngest works through the books, we put them away and we get some new ones and we walk the dog. And it's really a, just a cool kind of a community builder without having to do a bunch. Like once it's set up, it's ready to go. Um, but what's cool. So in the map, you can see all over. So you and your students could kind of plan, hey, like there's not a library in this area and it might be really beneficial for them. Um, you can they have different programs that deal with reading as well. So there's Read in Color, which is really a cool program um, to make sure that there is um, diverse books oh, yeah. in libraries. Mm -hmm. um, and so they are having like book sharing boxes around the world. And so like with Little Free Library, they're sponsoring this and having just a, a variety of books. Um, Impact Library Program, they have an action book club. They have different things that you can sign up for or be a part of to in, to ad, advance reading in your area. Um, and then you can actually, there's ways that you can buy books or book recommendations. Um, but so it's not just like a book box anymore. Um, there is programs and there is, there's just all kinds of cool things. There's ways of giving back. You can even host fundraisers. Um, hmm. So there's just... There's a lot of cool things, but this little free library is such a great way to build a little extra community and encourage reading in your area, um, especially if like your library is on the other side of town and you know kids can't walk there, don't have access to it. It's a great way to get books to students and for kids, like when you're walking in the neighborhood, like, oh, go grab a book and trade it out or read it and put it back when you're done with it. And adults use them too. We have both kids and adult books in our book box. Yep. Um, and so if you don't have one in your area, it would be a really cool project for your kids to do. And if you do have one, you could always use another one because there's never enough little free libraries because they are just amazing. I mean, if we put one up like five houses down from the other one, <laughs> that might be too many. I don't know though, because then you just like <laughs> pick it up on one route of your walk and then on a different <laughs> route of your walk, then you pick up a different book. Yeah, there you go. Or trade them between different parts but putting them in a community park you know, oh yeah read out in the park would be cool right i agree yeah so many good good places yeah so if you get a chance or if you don't have one you definitely need a little free library but what a cool project or just a way to give back to communities and they even have cute little like signs that say like we're a reading community blah, blah and they have like a little sign you can put next to your little free library and stuff so yeah that's cool cool little so. free library dot 
org. org. Yes. So check it out. And if you've already have one, like check out the site because they definitely have updated and done some cool things. Yeah. Cool. Good for them. That's cool. Good idea. Yeah. Brilliant. It is a brilliant idea. Brilliant. All right. So our next feature is actually not a website. It's an app. Oh, it's an app. It's an app. Tell me more. So charitymiles.org is an app. All right. Charitymiles.org. And what it does is you put the app on your phone and then you walk or you run or you ride a bike. And when you do that, you track your miles. Easy enough. Good for you. And when you've done that, you then put it into your little app on your phone. And you've already chosen your charity, by the way. Okay. Yes, in the beginning, you should have chose your charity. And then your little running and walking and jogging earns that charity money. Cool. It's like 10 cents a mile or 15 cents a mile. Oh, that's actually pretty that's good. That's pretty decent, especially if you are like riding 100 miles on your bike this weekend. Well, I mean, even look, so we walk the dog around the block, which is a half mile twice a day yeah you know so it's a mile so let's say it's 10 cents yeah and we're doing that you know it's like 70 cents a week multiply yeah. that out see we're looking at about 200 dollars for the year yeah if that's uh if that's kind of depends it's not always that but okay yeah, it depends sure. on the charity but um but yeah so you download the app and then once you have it downloaded you literally it's charitymiles.org it's, it's pretty easy setup so you download the app you create your little account Choose your charity. Do your running, walking, moving. I love it. Be a mover and a change maker in any way that fits your lifestyle. It's on their <laughs> site because it's so true. And then once you've done, you like for every mile you move, you earn some money and you just track it. And then it explains like how the different money goes through your charities. And what a cool like if you're going out for a walk, why not throw some money at a charity that can use it? And then they do have... um I should explain. Then they have like sponsors. So there's big name companies that sponsor the app. Um, and then like from Johnson and Johnson and Del Monte and Garmin. So like they have big name kind of backers that then put the money at the different charities, depending on how people are exercising. Sure. And then what I also think is cool, because they explain this on the website too, besides the app, but I'm on the website, charitymiles.org. Um, that you could, they have this like engage your employees piece, which I think is cool because they have challenges. So um, you can get together in a group and say like, all right, everybody at like at the middle school, we're all going to try and walk like five miles a week as a team. And then as a middle school, then like we can earn our money would be tracked kind of together so that way you can kind of make it a team thing, too, where like a group of friends can track their charity, you know, and earn money as a team versus just individually. Right, so that right. way it's more of like a, a little competition, but also a way to have some team building within your staff or within your school, um, which would be cool. So with students, if they're older and they have like their phones, like their apps, that would be such a cool way to kind of team build or give back to the community, finding a charity that everyone kind of um is for or if there's groups of students that are for specific charities it could even turn into a project then both earning for that charity and then maybe researching it and and doing a project based on it so um charitymiles.org is a really cool way to earn money for a charity and it's just by putting this app on your phone and then logging your running walking biking miles and whatnot by the way, the Hogwarts Running Club yeah, I saw that. <laughs> has more than 6.7 million charity miles. That's pretty awesome. Great work. Now, do you think they're cheating and using their brooms? <gasps> Ooh. Does that count? Maybe Does just Quidditch magic. count? I don't know. It I could. don't know. There you go. Very good questions. Nice. Yeah. So, a little just giving back. And actually, previously on... Uh, let me say episode 39, we yep. had talked about freerice.org, which I've brought up before. It's kind of just a quick academic review site. Mm -hmm. And for every correct question, students are able to earn um, food for the 
um can't even think of the name of it right now world food World's, program yep. so um like free rice is another one if you want to throw some academics in there and have students give back they so, can do it that here way we go. Too. so you're out for a walk right you yes. got your your charity miles.org app up and running yeah you've got free rice.com up and as you're walking and getting in those miles mm -hmm. you're you're you know, kind of keeping one eye out where you're going and the other eye is answering questions on freerice.com mm -hmm. in order to help the World Food Program. And while you're walking then, you walk past your little free library and grab your book. Yes. And once you've gotten your book, you kind of tuck that in the side pocket and collect five cans and you've hit all four websites in one walk. In one little walk. Boom. Boom. There you go. Now oh, get your kids to amazing. do that. Amazing. Exponential. Yeah. Think of all the little things they're going to do to give back to the community. I love it. These are great ideas. Yay, I'm so Way excited. Go. Yeah, that's it's fun totally going to challenge it. We're totally going to try this. We're going to have to try this. Yes. I'm going to, we're going to start a YouTube channel. And we're going to report out and how I'm this gonna, all I'm going to record you doing yes. all of this. Okay, let's cool. do it. Cool. Game on. Very good. Well, thanks for tuning in. Yay, Yay. for the summer. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in this episode, you can visit smartnwi.com. New episodes each week. We'll see you in September. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast and the Smart NWI website are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed on this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we sure hope they do. And we'll talk to you again in September here on the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. Mm -hmm.